Hi there, I'm Paul Belflam and this is Industrial Organization. This presentation is about normal form games. The objective is to review some basic concepts of game theory, namely the three following concepts, normal form games, the best response function or correspondence, and the mesh equilibrium. If you want to have uh, some background reading about this topic, I refer you to Appendix A1 in the textbook. Right, so what is a game in normal form? Well, this game is defined by three elements. First of all, you need to define a set of players, who is playing. Then for each player, we call them i in this set, n of players. You need to define what this player can do, what is the set of feasible actions for this player. We name this set capital X i. And the third element is for each player i in this set n, you need to define a profit function, which we write pi of i. Okay, and this profit function is a function of the actions taken by all players, by player i himself or herself, and by all the other players. So x minus i is a notation for the profile, the vector of the actions taken by all the other players but player i. Okay, so these three elements define a normal form game and what players choose is a strategy. We note it xi, which is an action taken in this set capital XI. And you can also define what is called a mixed strategy. So XI is a pure strategy. A mixed strategy is a probability dis distribution over the elements of xi. So, for example, the game could be uh, for me uh, to go left or to go right. That would be my two uh, feasible action. Okay. A pure strategy would be to go left with 100 uh, probability or to go right with 100 probability. These are the two pure strategies. But I could also decide to randomize between these two actions and say, for example, that I go uh, left with 30% chance and right with 70% chance or any other uh, distribution of probability between these two actions that would constitute a mixed strategy. In the course we will most of the time concentrate on pure strategies but it's good to know that mixed strategies exist and as we will see in what follows um, an equilibrium in a pure strategy may not always exist and so we may need to define the equilibrium as a mixed strategy equilibrium. Okay, so the, the most important concept that we will use uh, uh, all the time is the concept of a best response. Okay, so let's start with a best response in pure strategy. It's a strategy xi that is such that given what the other players are choosing, so x minus i, this strategy xi gives you the largest profit that you could uh, obtain over all the actions you could choose. Okay, so the profit you gain by uh, playing the strategy xi is larger than the profit you gain by playing any other strategy x prime i in your set of available strategies. Okay, so this is what, why we call this, this a best response, a best response to what the other players are choosing. This is the best you can do. This is how you maximize your profit over all the actions you could choose from. Okay. Now, for a given set of um, or a given profile of strategies of the other players, there may be more than one such xi. Okay. So, if there are more than one action that maximizes your profit, well, they both are best responses. So, you would have what is called a best response correspondence. Okay. There are for a given x minus i, there may be more than one xi that gives you a larger profit than any other action that you can play. Okay. So the players in a game, they want to maximize their profit, so they will choose a best response uh, strategy. Okay? And the idea of an equilibrium, and this is a Nash equilibrium, is that all players are doing that, given what the, what the other players are doing. Okay? So this is how we define the Nash equilibrium. It's a strategy profile, so a strategy for each player, Called this strategy profile x star such that each player is best responding to what the others are doing. Okay, so given that the others are choosing their uh, strategy in this profile, 
it is also for player I the best thing to do to choose this strategy instead of any other strategy. Okay, another way to say this is that the strategy of each player is in the best response correspondence to the strategy uh, chosen by all the other players. Okay? You can define this in pure strategies and very in a similar way in mixed strategies. Okay, of course, we'll have plenty of occasions to uh, apply this concept. Now, before uh, I close this presentation, let me just give you two more uh, definitions. Um, first of all, what is a finite game? Well, this is simply a game where the strategy set of each player has a finite number of possible actions. Okay, so my example before with le going left or going right, there are two uh, possible actions, so it's definitely a finite game. Okay, what's interesting is to uh, look at the properties of these games. Well, as I said before, in this type of games, a pure strategy in Ashek Liru may fail to exist. Okay, but you're sure to find at least one mixed strategy at Liru. Okay. Now, one example, and I refer you to the uh, video uh, that you can watch just after this presentation. One example is called the Battle of the Sexes. It's a coordination game. You will uh, see in the video what it means. It has nothing to do with this movie. Uh, I just put the poster there because I find this, this is an excellent movie, so you may be interested in watching it. Um, so I refer you to this video, but you will see there that there are two pure strategy Nash equilibrium and one mixed strategy Nash equilibrium in this game. Okay, so it confirms that at least one mixed strategy equilibrium exists in this type of games. Now, last definition, it's about continuous games. Um, here, it's a game where the strategy set is made of real numbers. Okay, and as I say here, the price and quantity competition games that we will analyze uh, later this week uh, are uh, belong to this category. If you choose a price, well, you choose a real number between zero and uh, maybe some uh, uh, maximum price, which uh, otherwise, I mean, if you were setting a price above that, nobody would uh, would buy your product. Okay, so that's what we say here. If there is a lower and not bound for each player's strategy, then a sufficient condition for the existence of a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies is that the payoff function by i is quasi-concave in xi and continuous in x for all players. Okay, what does it mean quasi-concave? It means basically that uh, there is a single peak in the function. Okay, so behind this, what you need to, uh, to remember is that the games we are going to look at, where firms, for example, choose a price or choose a quantity, these are continuous games that fulfill these conditions here. And so basically we will find a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies uh, without any, any problem. Um, well, I will tell you where there are, when there are problems, but most of the time uh, this will be satisfied, so we don't need to uh, worry too much about the existence of the Nash equilibrium. And that's it for now. Thank you.